Hi, how are Hi. you? Hey. Good. I'm so excited to talk to both of you. Um, I love the movie. I, I truly did. It, it's kind of everything I love about <laughs> cinema. And I'm so glad you made it. And Thank you for saying that. It's, I just, I adored it. Um, it, it really, I love, I love horror and I love comedy and I love anything to do with the 80s. I grew up in the 80s in Los Angeles. So I really, it was very appealing to me. Um, and I just wanted to start with you. Uh, what made you want to write this particular film and where, where did the idea come from? Uh, I, I've always loved the femme fatale genre, you know, uh, I mean, I, I can't list off enough of the movies that have inspired me. Last night, I actually rewatched Fatal Attraction and Basic Instinct, like these are just some of my favorite films. And then, you know, Jean Tierney and Leave Her to Heaven, Gloria Swanson in Sunset Boulevard, Barbara Stanwyck in Double Indemnity. So many of these diabolical characters have thrilled and intrigued us for decades. And I wanted to write, I wanted to write about a really uninhibited, really brave, tough, successful gal who um, is, doesn't, who fears nothing. And um, it, I wanted it to be a parody and a satire uh, and, and a caricature. Um, there, I, I don't know if anyone had ever done a femme fatale parody before, but, but I wanted to, to make a femme fatale movie that would make people laugh. I, I love that. And you definitely did. And I, I, I could see the inspiration of like Jean Tierney and Gloria Swanson. And I, I love those kind of roles too, so much. How did um, you guys get together? How did you meet Ed? And um, Ed, what made you want to be in, in this film? Yeah. I, I, he was the dream catch for this role. That's all I need to say. He was, he was like literally the like number one. She says person. that. I saw five other guys walking out. <laughs> There's five other guys. No, no. no. They were all unavailable. Um, That's not true. No, look, I, I, I'm, the, script, the script fortunately came uh, came to my manager uh, and I, I read it and I laughed and I uh, shrieked throughout it. And um, I went along to meet Louise and we had just one of those kind of, one of those initial meetings that you'll always remember, you know, we really got on like a house on fire and her enthusiasm, her passion, her vision for the film um, was just amazing. It sounded incredible. And, you know, look, I, at that point, I hadn't really done a lot of comedy, um, let alone something like this and playing this kind of character that was just kind of, you know, the nicest guy in the world, a bit hopeless <laughs> and, um, and, and, and just quite endearing, I guess. And so I, um, I, I, I just wanted to go on that journey, you know? So it was just, it was just all of those things. I, I do love it because there is, there is definitely like a sentimentality to the film, which I love because it, it is, there's all this craziness and, um, but, but it, it's sweet, it's really sweet. And there's like tender moments in it, which I really adore. And it's hilarious and it's so much fun. Um, Did you so see the end credits with how, how everything ends up for them? Yes, I did. Yes. So I grew up watching John Hughes movies and I loved him as a director, hands down my favorite director. Um, but at the end of his films, there was always, I always felt this sweetness and sentimentality, kind of like this bittersweet nostalgia where you almost have to catch your breath and you're smiling, but at the same time, you long to see the character, you, you long to get back into the film and be with these characters, mm -hmm. like, you know, like in The Breakfast Club, for example, um, and, and Sixteen Candles, and I, um, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. You know, there, I wanted to make a film that was part action, part rom-com, but at the end, I want people to finish watching those end credits and to just feel that warmth, you know, and that, 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 Belief in humanity and love I, and love, you know. I love that you said that. Um, there is this, this sounds really stupid. There's like a Portuguese word for like kind of like a bittersweet nostalgia called saudage. <laughs> and I think it kind of would work very well for this. Um, but I think that a lot of times there is, though I read in your press notes too, because you said something about um, you wanted to go kind of back to a time where people didn't take themselves so seriously. And I think part of it, people kind of right now take themselves so seriously that it, that's kind of missing from a lot of things. Yeah. And I feel like we all need that kind of. Yeah. Like that. Exactly. And, you know, 
I know what the what the what the media what the, what persona they've created for me, yeah, uh, which by the way couldn't be further from the truth. I'm just like every other yeah. girl, you know. Um, I'm sensitive. I've got feelings, you know. Um, but but I also have a sense of humor. So in in many ways, this is kind of a parody on on you know I you know Catherine's like a souped up version of <laughs> the glove wearing. Um, person you know that that has that, that loves fashion and uh you know she's a caricature and she and she's uh she's filled with satire i love that you said that because i think that it's a complete kind of satire on the like false depiction the media has made not only on you but like and then people i know as well that is always insane and so far from the truth i love you jennifer you're the first you. you're the no, first like, no, reporter it's, 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 <laughs> You know, you're the first ever reporter to say that. And it's, it's, it's true, like, though. it's, yeah, I mean, you know, they, they like to focus on the negative, <laughs> but I, I really, I really hope that when people watch this, that they, they realize, you know, I've got a sense of humor and I'm, I'm like every other girl. I mean, one of my closest friends is a well-known musician. And I've seen the craziest shit said yeah. about the one I love that I know is an amazing human being. So yeah. I can only imagine. And so I love that you did this movie. <laughs> I think it's the perfect thing. And I hope that um, people have sense enough to like not ever really believe gossip mags, but you know. Yeah, thank you. Know, I, <laughs> what I, was, I, um, I just made a friend of a reporter, that's a first. See, I'm not a normal reporter though. And I'll fit. <laughs> no, you're an awesome one. <laughs> I really do, I really love. Are you in LA? I am in Los Angeles, yes. <laughs> We should hang out after COVID. Any time you want, I will. I will send you all my. Uh, well, I already follow you guys on Instagram. I will send you Jennifer E Ortega is right, and I'll send you yes, all my. Send, send us a slide. I, I can slide 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 many times. Seriously, <laughs> anytime you want. Like, wait, are you wearing a shirt? What shirt did you have with? Let me see. Oh wait, because it's small. Cause it's my that's yeah. what I thought. Because it would buy the picture. It's at Westwick. We've got a bunch of merch that we're sending out to fans and influencers and eventually it'll be available on mewmadness.com but I quite like sitting next to Ed Westwick but also <laughs> wearing Ed Westwick. Ed should wear the shirt too I think. I mean, it's Ed should wear the one with me but he's too cool he doesn't want to put me on. Oh, I'm be cool I'll wear it. <laughs> I guess. What was one of um, the most challenging scenes that you guys have filmed? Fight during? scene definitely. The fight scene was like Amazing. super long and we had this super fast dialogue going back and forth so there was a lot like you're doing the stunts and trying to remember this very witty fast-paced dialogue and I actually ended up with like quite a sore neck at the end of the you night. You had to see the magic at the end of the day. Yeah yeah I was pretty bashed up um, and then Louise told me she went and cut half of it out so thank you. <laughs> Sorry. You know? Yeah. It was I mean it was brutal. Yeah. It was or seven or eight hours straight scene um we did have stunt doubles but uh we decided to just go for it mostly ourselves and there was a lot of stunt choreography that we had rehearsed um and stunt choreography is a, is, is is extremely physical obviously so we were literally throwing punches and climb, climbing all over each other and bashing each other and so we we it was it was it was exhausting and also what people probably won't realize is that that set um was absolutely freezing it was 45 degrees one day it was, it was almost snowing outside and it was very cold and, and reflections everywhere and there were reflections everywhere because of all the glass yes. um but that scene was yeah that was you know what we could we could release the other the other half of that she's in another yeah. We just throw into another movie. Yeah, good one. Yeah. Yeah. Short. What was the process of you guys kind of, because you guys had such great chemistry on screen um, and you worked so well together. So what was the process of you kind of like nailing down your roles and rehearsing together to kind of, I guess like either sometimes you have good chemistry or don't, but you guys clearly did in this. But. Well, we, we like, we've got, we've got good banter in real life. I'm Scottish, he's English. So we've got that going for us. That usually is a good, yeah. a good jumping off point for some good banter. Um, Honestly, I think the the piece itself, you know, the, the subject, like the way these characters are, you know, it's the ultimate icebreaker in itself. You know, you're just like, okay, this is full on. Let's just go for it. You know, <laughs> it was like a freestyle dance. It you was. Know? That's what you do. You know, the whole thing, and so. 
we just we just went for it, you know. And like Luis is Luis is great. She's, and Ed's very comedic. He's he's at like in this in this comedic role. I think we both needed this thing like to just let loose. You yeah. Know? And that's what it and that's what it did for us. Yeah. You're very funny. You should do definitely more. I love I loved it. I mean, we're planning more projects together. Good. Good. There needs to be more. I mean, I'm. I think I'm so glad it's coming out for Valentine's Day because I think it is a great Valentine's Day movie to watch. I mean, it's coming out two days before, but you know. The head of the studio said we got to release this on Valentine's because it's, it's, it's the perfect after Valentine's movie. <laughs> but it is. It's kind of like you know how people always talk about like Die Hard being a Christmas movie because it is a Christmas movie. Like you, it's something you wouldn't see on the surface and be like, that's a Valentine's Day movie, but it is. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it's just I love it and I'm so glad to talk to both of you I know like they're gonna kick me off of here in a second so try to wrap up but um I can't wait till it's out because there's so many people I want to see it um I die for the clothes and all the and every the neon it everything in it and the music is all amazing and you both are amazing <laughs> thank you me. so much you're so sweet thank you oh my god you guys are amazing I was it made me I, I'm so glad it's out and I think it's it's so fun and it's a movie that everybody everyone needs like come on everybody <laughs> watch our movie yeah. 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 Watch it. <laughs> but thank you so much thank you so much thank it's you. really been such a pleasure chatting I, with you and, and, and keep in touch i will I, I love you and i will and i think love you. you both are amazing so thank you so much thank thanks you. Jennifer. Bye. Bye. bye thank you